Yeah, nigga. I just wanna pull up in the all red test the roaster So I'm doing anything to get me closer Work all day then I swag all night To the bands all black and the jag all white I just wanna leave a couple bills in the wheel So my homeboy straight and my kids know it's real So my moms and my sis and my nephews ball Die like a kingpin when death do call Bury me and Martin Mar jealous Yeah I'm talking 750 for the kick game Fucking with a model she just love me for my dick game NYC floor seats at the nick game Nigga let's ball I just wanna ball out Fuck it get drunk off Remy till we Fall out, shorty got work in the A and better call out. Only live once, so you know we going all out. Let's shine. Matter of fact, fuck shine, we illuminate. I'ma keep going hard, nigga. You can hate. Bitch acts why I rap, cause I do the great. Look at all this motherfucking money we accumulate. Let it pile up, then we file out. On the runway, then we fly out. Get a bad bitch, then we slide out. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna wild out. So usually it just for me it's, it all starts with the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, my music is really driven by feelings and the feeling of the actual record. You know, like, a lot of music that I even like that I listen to won't necessarily be the lyrics. You know, I like a Keisha Cole record and she'll be saying something, you know, talking about heartbreak, but it's really the feeling of the actual record that I'm in love with, you know? So when I get a beat, that gives me a certain feeling, and from there, you know, I start to figure out where I'm gonna go with the record, what emotions I want to convey, what subjects I want to talk about. I mean, as a person, he's a good dude, always a hundred. Um, I think I think that just transfers over into the music. Like, if he was a real nigga in real life, in the music, it's gonna be the same shit. He um, he embodies what you what you're looking for in an artist at this point, man. I mean, I myself am an artist, but I'm. There are the ways in which he influences and inspires me. Um, even as as uh, uh, as the role that we play as friends. I've known Chris for, for a minute, you know what I'm saying? We, we grew up together, like, I mean, he's a little few years younger than me, but we all grew up together, went to school together, you know what I'm saying? And I, we used to do music before he did, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like, I always knew he was like a raw talent. <laughs> We made music that didn't sound like um, local music. And when I say local, I don't mean local as in Boston. I mean local as in local. Like, doesn't matter if you're from Alabama and you make local music, if you're from uh, Idaho and you make local music, or you're from California and you make local music. You hear the Boston influence in it, but there was a worldly appeal in all of the music that Chris made, myself, and as, and us as a uh, collective. My work relationship with CZ really based upon, uh, it just all starts from our friendship already, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we was sandbox niggas. I moved in the same apartment, who he moved out of, you know, like, and it just so happens we became best friends. I didn't even know that when I moved into the apartment, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know the nigga, you know what I mean? It's just so crazy how we, everything came together like that. Um, so our relationship stems off friendship that both niggas that just ca caught the same dream, feel what I'm saying, and started running with it. It's just crazy how it worked out. So, you know, so, you know, so it all just came together so it was easy, you know what I mean? So everything that we did since we was younger, man, just always just been easy for us because we're best friends, you know what I'm saying? It's like my brother. So if you know Caesar, you know me, regardless of how long we've been doing this for, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, our, our, our relationship is, is more than a relationship, it's a brotherhood. My next bitch, see my old bitch chillin' with my new bitch. I walk in, hit the ball by a bottle. The pop my collar, roll up on them off the coat. Shit, pimpin' ain't easy, slippin' ain't seasy. Never been a hater, truck the juice, see you later. Got a safe full of paper, pocket full of bank rolls. Never dolo, I go everywhere the gang goes. Mommy got a body like a gymnast. See you bend it over, I can tell you in the fit. She said, Why you lookin'? I can tell you wanna hit shit. Status in the party, shout it, can I get a witness? You know, being from here, man, being from such a a relatively small city it's like um, it's like trying to throw a rock into the ocean you know what I'm saying trying to trying to be heard trying to you know what I'm saying so you got to adopt and, and create opportunity you know what I'm saying you got to find ways you got to get out on the road you got to go meet people you got to build relationships you got to grind like it's, it's more of a grind than it is anything else trying to put yourself on the map you know, if you're not from a major market like New York or LA or Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta really put that extra work in, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when it comes to writing a verse, you know, I used to be a rapper too. 
so you know I, I you know I could kind of relate to it too <laughs> you know like it's not just about being nice and you can put words that sound good together or that rhymes but it's about not just what you say but how you say it you know I'm not even gonna front people know me as a rapper I was terrible you know what I'm saying they're not like my beats you know what I'm saying beats is over here rapping was over here so you we, we used to tell me that because I was the type of rapper that used to say whatever, but not the right way. You know, so it was like it didn't sound slick, it didn't sound fly, it didn't sound like it should sound. And CZ was a rapper that made it sound smooth. The new era. You got that shit. You know what I mean? It's me and him on that song. Sure, the thing that made me be. Fat boy K and Gordo, Boston, Brooklyn, the fucking Boston. I mean, to the bridge. We did our thing. I'm seeing me the Brooklyn stand up. I just came back from Brooklyn just so I come do this video shoot. No bullshit. Touchdown. I was at a movie shoot back in Brooklyn. I fuck with CZ for years. Just keep your eyes open, your ears open. You heard your ears clean, nigga. While we get these strippers here money together, man. What are we doing? We're taking care of the strippers. Hold on, we gotta get a picture of this okay. bag. Yeah, I'm gonna go to work and dump this shit out so I can't get all the pictures. Cause we like these. They didn't Yo, Drew! I'm, I'm all over you, dude. <laughs> no, I'm all for real. Roman! I'm at your house, bro. Yo, wait, dollar Chris bills, you heard? You heard? Dollar bills, you heard? You heard? T. We're out here. I'm saying, pulling a banana. Just shot the video for Pay Your Bills. You know what I mean? CZ, Chris Davis, Fat Boy, aka Gordo, Vast Squeeze right here. Cambridge, Massachusetts, I mean, repping everywhere. So as far as how I want my brand to be perceived, I just want you to know that what I give you lyrically and musically is honest. Your boyfriend charges you? It's very honest. I pride myself on honesty. Honesty is, is I feel like, emotion is the best music because that's what really connects with people worldwide. Music is, is colorblind. White people, black people, Spanish people, it doesn't matter. As long as it's real and it comes from a real place, people can relate to it. And that's what I pride myself on. Whether it's a song in a strip club, whether it's a song on the corner, whether it's a song about me and my, my girl and my kids, whatever it is, it comes from a real place. I just hopped up all that jet, money all in my bag. Got them all looking like damn. Who you know do it like that? Then take a look at my kid. One word, two words, swag. Hit his old man at kids, cause all I do is brag. My I remember as far back as being maybe seven, seven, eight years old, seeing um the records, the old records that my grandmother had in the collection. I remember um, Easy es NWA album sticking out to me. Um, Anita Baker. I never actually listened to the records. I just, they just st stuck in my memory. And then from there, you know, it was Michael Jackson and um, Criss Cross. I was a big Criss Cross. Still, my name's Chris. You already know. I first met him when he was just a young raw artist, not not really an artist yet, just a rapper on the. You know what I mean, freestyle all day and was just real raw, aggressive with it wasn't really making, you know, what I'd like to call a record. It was just more like, you know, going in the studio and just recording over beats and although it was it was he, it was just more, you know, than when he when he linked up with Jay, Jay caught him. Um, and Jay's production was crazy. And started getting around GIs and these guys started formulating the whole R A P thing. That's when he started to really make music. The recording aspect is, is probably um, my favorite of oh, my favorite, like I just enjoy creating. Like I went away, I did, um, you know, when I went away, like I, I was I was wondering, like, I was trying to figure out what I missed about music, you know what I'm saying? Cause I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. There was no beats to write to, there was no space to record it. So it was just like, I just miss creating, being in the studio, that's like, that's like my element. You know what I mean? Like I love the stage, I love to be in the streets, hand to hand, meeting people, shaking hands. But my element, where I am most comfortable and where I'm best is, is in the studio. Chris Davis. He has the same last name as Miles. Miles Davis. He's a great trumpet player. And Caesar's a great rapper. So, you know, I guess there's a, something in common with the two. I knew Caesar since he was like 16, maybe even 15. 
But he lived around the corner from me. I used to live in NC, North Cambridge. And he lived in Lincoln Way, and I knew one of his sister's friends, which used to talk about him all the time. So one day, we finally we finally met, me and CZ. And he heard of me, you know, he knew about me. I was, I was making beats around high school, and I, you know, I was doing my rap thing and shit. And um, CZ was like, yo, we gotta get up, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, yeah, no doubt. <coughs> so you know, when I tell him where I live, he's like, oh, you live down the street from me. I'm like, yeah, we gotta get up. So he comes through, and, um, Shit, it was history ever since then, you know what I'm saying? We were just working, and he was like, yo, my beats sound an industry quality. He was like, yo, da, 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 this is what I needed. I put him onto a studio at the time, which was Cyber Sound, where I used to record all my shit at. And um, we, I used to, we used to be there all the time, booking four or five hours. Four or five hour blocks for a 17 year old is expensive, first off. And there's a lot of time when you just when you don't know what you're doing, especially when you're just straight knuckleheads, don't know nothing about nothing. You know what I'm saying? We learned as we went. We worked on mad joints. We had mad records together, like this other joint called Medicine, which was on my album at the time, which was the first record that you went as Big C. And also it was like a record that was like, we buzzed in Cambridge for that record. You know what I'm saying? The Medicine. I remember my man Fritz Pound Hollywood used to dump that shit all the time. That was the shit since day one when reality hit. If I don't make it, I knew that rap would be it. I'm coming at him with exactly the shit. Come on, man. That shit was, yo, Seasy, man. It was fucking undeniable. I think lyrics are super important still. I think, um, I think you know, if you want to sell records, um, this is which this is a, a record industry, so that is the goal. You know, choruses are, 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 are you know, if you can't, you have to be able to make a, a catchy, a very good chorus and a, a good song overall. But um, lyricism, yeah, it's very important to me as far as, you know, the music that I listen to. I like some substance. This right here is, um, it's a t-shirt. Part of a collection, we um we selling these for charity for the um, marathon bombing that happened last year in our city. We are doing a benefit concert, so this is gonna uh, this is a way for us to uh, give back, you know, give back to the city. It's a real dope thing. Shout out one off a pair of um you know throwing the design on there and J Picks. We're designing it. New Age Empire, man. We are doing more than just music, you know. He comes from a um you know a background where where you know you got you got ground hard, you know, what I'm saying a fine god at the end of the day, so. Right now he knows, he knows like this is it, this is the time we can't we can't mess around. We can't go we can't go back, you know what I'm saying? I mean we could only go forward from right now, you know what I'm saying? If you don't want it, I mean it's time to just stop and he and he really wants it, so exclusive Tony Fad.